Hey everyone, today we're gonna to look at an XAPI example that I built for the recent Learning Solutions Conference 2023 that is uh, produced by the Learning Guild. And it's an awesome example that really shows the advantage of XAPI and really the power of XAPI as well. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Hey, welcome back. My name is Jeff Bat, and if you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all previous blog posts covering everything learning development, so Camtasia, XAPI related, storyline, enhancing your storyline as well. All of that is there. You can also download free templates and articulate Storyline 360, and then XAPI templates as well, including video templates and PDF templates. And if you're new to any of these subjects, you can check out full courses covering everything from A to Z on Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 Video. So this example was brought on because I really wanted to show the power of XAPI that I don't see explored because there's two different parts of XAPI. There's the ability to track behavior, learning behavior, what the learner has done, how they interact with your page, if they go to a page, if they like a page, if they uh, do different things like that. And I wanted to show the, the real power of that inside of XAPI in my session, but I also wanted to show the power of being able to pull the data and to get real-time data and to be able to use that data outside of a learning management system as well. So that was really the goal in, uh, when, in creating this example that I'm about to show you. And so I really wanted to just kind of um, just create an example that would really show the power of that. So I talked about in my session, XAPI, just X, XAPI basics, and how to send over XAPI, even with tools that are no code or anything like that. So I have plenty of videos on my YouTube channel if you wanted to check anything out XAPI related or storyline related or other things like that. So make sure you check that out. But this example, I actually built using Bootstrap. Now I'm gonna actually give a little space here to be able to pull this up on the screen here. But uh, this example is using Bootstrap and something called Swiper.js. Now Swiper.js allows me to create the page-to-page -page navigation that you see with Storyline. And I, I wanted to just be able to create this in my own design, my own look and feel, and to have this be responsive without using uh, Rise. Now Rise is responsive, Rise is awesome, but Rise is not flexible. So you, it's really hard to uh, add on statements and other things like that. So that's one of the reasons why I created it using Bootstrap. So just a simple example, I wanted attendees to be able to come in person and to be able to um, go through and answer a couple of questions and then on the fly have a graph that would actually show their data. So I'm gonna walk you through the learner experience and the attendee experience here, and then we're gonna go through on the result experience and show you how on the fly these results are compiled here. Just as a way to show you the potential of XAPI. That is really one of the main reasons why I'm creating this video. So right here is my welcome screen. So I have welcome, thank you for attending this Learning Solutions Conference. The details will only be used for testing. So I let the, the attendees know not to enter any real data if they don't want their real data shown here. Now, all of this XAPI data, once you send over XAPI data, is sent over to a learning record store. So I am using the learning record store, SCORM Cloud, and SCORM Cloud by default does not have graphs or anything like that. It's just a straight feed of data that comes in. And so you would be able to, I mean, with, with learning record stores like Watershed or Grassblade or um, veracity or something like that, you'd be able to create graphs to make sense of the data. With Watershed, I'm sorry, with Squirm Cloud, you can't. It's Squirm Cloud is just basically just the feed of data. And that's not really that bad because that allowed me to go in and create my own reports and my own data. And this is all based on a free account. So depends on how much you're gonna use this and your users and everything like that, you may need to get a paid account, but this example was all done with the free account. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my name here. So it has a spot for me to autofill my name. And so I'm gonna autofill my email as well and then hit save learner. 
Now this stores it inside of the local storage. And so it then sends over an X API statement that they started the course. And so that's really the very first thing that it does is it saves it in local storage. So now on all the other pages, I can go grab the person because there's three things with an X API statement. There's who the person is, what action did they do? That's the verb. And then describing the action. So Jeff Bat attended session on X API at Learning Solutions. So you can add a bunch of other metadata as well. So that is what I have here. So if I try to reload this, and the reason why I used local storage is so if I tried to reload this, I didn't have to enter in my name and email again. All right, so now I can just swipe to the next page or use the arrows to go to the next page. And this is the very first question. So how many times have you been to Learning Solutions? So I asked, okay, are you a first timer, second timer, third timer? So I've been several times. So I just enter in that question and then go on to the next question here. So question two, what has been your experience with XAPI? So a lot of them were uh, none or very little. I'm gonna say expert level. So I'm gonna select expert there. And then what are you hoping to get out of this session? And then new skills and then hit submit and then go on to the next page. Now these are resources that I provide. So like my play, uh, my Udemy course, as well as my YouTube playlist, which has a bunch of videos on XAPI. So I tried to provide all of that XAPI cohort. If you've never done the cohort that is hosted by the Learning Guild, they do an excellent job on just doing this kind of cohort based, um, working with other people to create real, real world XAPI uh, examples. And so if you wanna check that out or just my website, at learningdojo.ninja. So what I did though, is I tracked anyone that's clicked on uh, one of those links. So if they click on it, I track that through X API. And then also on social links, if anybody wanted to connect with me on social links, my LinkedIn, my Twitter, and my website, if somebody tapped on that, it would also track that they went to that website. So I'm gonna go back here. And that was just the, the learner experience, the attendee experience. Now I'm gonna go back a couple different pages and I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna hit refresh here. Now it won't reset my user, but it will reset my questions. And so I could save my questions in local storage, but in this case, I didn't here. Now let's go into the learning record store. And in the learning record store, you can see here, all the data that's coming in as the attendees are filling this out. So you can see here, Jeff Bat experienced page two, page one, page three, page four, because I kind of went back, keep that in mind. I clicked on, or I completed the survey because I finished the, the last question. And then also I started, answered question three, I answered question two, I answered with the, whatever the answer was. And then um, I also started that. So all this data was starting to come in. Now this, I could have pulled this up and shown attendees like, this is great. You can go through and look at all the data here, but I wanted to go a step further. So in the step further, what I did is in the session, I pulled this, the results up. Now this was all custom built as well. Now this is that second step that I'm talking about. You can push the data to the learning record store but that's not it. You can also pull the data. And in when you pull the data, you can use the data however you want. And so what I did is pulled the data, me and a developer that I work with, um, we pulled the data in here and in real time actually updated the data as it came in. So I had this up when people started filling out the different questions and they could see the graphs adjust as they started to fill out, which was really cool to be able to see that data. So imagine you as the trainer or as the instructional designer to be able to pull up a dashboard and to see in real time how your learners are doing and how they're performing with the course, especially if you're conducting a live session like that. So imagine me as the, the instructor, uh, in-person instructor, and I wanted to see how people are engaging with my content. And so I would do some instruction and then I would ask a couple questions and say, go to question three on the website. And they go to question three and fill that out. And I can in real time adjust my teaching on the fly. I've also done this with like my class that I teach at a university where I was able to uh, see the people watch the video and send over XAPI statements as they watch the video and be able to see when they've completed it, when they started it, and then questions throughout the video as well. So just some real-time data that just 
so much potential with XAPI here. And this is the reason why I wanted to explore this. So see this data. My first question is how many times have you attended LSCon? So a lot of first timers in this case. Uh, how much experience have you had? So none, very little, some, and then experts, uh, which was probably the one that I just filled out. And also this kind of word cloud. What are you hoping to get out of it? What I didn't take into account was once I had a bunch of people filling it out, um, it wasn't the easiest to read as far as that goes because I had some overlapping things. But that's just, you know, first time trying this out, I could probably go in and adjust the style of this so it's not overlapping as much. But then this is where the data of started and completed really came into play. So you can see several have started it and several have completed it. Now, the reason why there's more completed is because I probably went back page, went back to page five, and so I sent it sent the completions more. To get around that, you'd probably just want to avoid sending completions more than once. So that's just probably some something in the coding that I'd probably wanna do. But here is the most interesting example here. I send a statement on every page. Every time I swipe a page, it will send a statement that that person visited a page. So if I go from page three to page four, and then I go back to page three, it will send over another statement on page three. And then back to page four, it'll send over another statement on page four, which may be too much, you may be wondering, but it's also very telling because in, in courses that we've implemented this, it's very interesting to see the pages that are more popular, the content that people keep going back to. That's telling because it allows you to see what are people interested in or what did they didn't grasp or something like that. And so you can see right now, people were going back to page four. Page four was, I believe, the uh, filling out the re text response. And so I had more of those than anything else. But then I also had more of page three and so forth. And so not everyone was going to my resources uh, at the very last. So just so much more detail than we could ever get with SCORM. So to me, it's like, why don't we use XAPI more? Because just all this detail that we can get. Now, obviously you don't wanna track more than what you're going to use and you want to be careful with your data, things like that to consider, of course. But there's a lot more that we can do that we're not doing. And then also scrolling down here, the links visited, I can see um, who visited my course. Obviously my Udemy training was probably the more popular one. YouTube playlist, my XAPI cohort link, and then my Learning Dojo website. So just a lot of information that goes well beyond what SCORM can do and allows us to track a lot more. So I wanted to show you this just as an example of the potential of XAPI and really being able to use this. Now, yes, this example, especially the graph, did take some extra coding, but it's something that I'm happy to share, but it's also something that you can do. You can probably even engage with a, a web developer to create some of this type of data for you pretty easily. So it's, I mean, don't be afraid of that. There's a lot of workarounds for this, or even going into your learning record store like Veracity and creating this these similar types of uh, reports as well. So there's just, you don't have to custom build it. You can go right into a learning record store and, and create reports that way. There's a lot of potential either way. So Hopefully this at least gives you an example. If you like this video, go on to my YouTube channel, click that like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows me to keep producing these videos for you. And also I have several more videos in the works, more about Camtasia, Storyline. So if you're interested in those tools, make sure you come back or at least subscribe so you get notified of all future videos. That's all I have for you today. Hopefully you found this useful or at least interesting and I'll see you next time. Thanks everyone.